It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Niners and the Seahawks, and it's coming up next. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the 12s. Up next, the good one in the NFC West and a wild card rematch from a year ago as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, this was a team after the Russell Wilson trade that looked like they might be bottoming out. But for years, the Seahawks have had great success in the NFL draft, as you well know. And they've used the last few drafts to really restock this roster. And they certainly have restocked this roster and have gotten back to playing football the way that they want to do it. Seahawks football, which means running the ball with authority on offense. They've added runners, offensive linemen, and now they're just being forceful in the way they're going about their business, the way that they did it when they ran the Super Bowls. Then for the visiting 49ers, you know, they're exciting on the offensive side of the ball, but it's the defense that really provides a lot of stability. They were second by a whisker to the Bills in total defense a year ago. And they have all pro caliber players at all three levels, all capable of taking over a game. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. They had no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. The Niners offense set to go to work and it's last year's revelation Brock Purdy who leads them out in season number two from Iowa State. There weren't many bigger stories last season than Purdy who's officially the most famous Mr. Irrelevant of all time. Won each of his first five starts and almost guided his team to a Super Bowl. He's really forced the team to reevaluate its plans at quarterback because he looks like the real deal. What a pickup this man was last year. It's Christian McCaffrey. And he's going to have a Niners first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Purdy. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and two. Purdy now to throw off the play action. And this one's going to sail on him a bit, and it's incomplete. Had an open man that time and ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, Gardner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Purdy off the play fake. Pass to the sideline and put it in. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Give him three yards there on the first down pickup. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 13 yards there and a Niner first. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Again, they run again. It's McCaffrey. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Just need a yard here, second and one. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. 
They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. What a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Play action, now Purdy. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. Gets around him. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And as you're game planning as a staff, you go through all the different ways you can neutralize the other guys' pass rushers. Extra linemen, leave a tight end in, bring the running backs back in to block. Or you can do this, a little simple screen pass, and it works to perfection. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Purdy sets up to throw again. That's caught. It's McCaffrey again. And here he'll get it down to the seven. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. They'll bring a tight end in motion right. On second down, McCaffrey. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. Christian McCaffrey taking it in from seven yards away. And the Niners are on the board first here this afternoon. Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Moody good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time pro bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games, winning comeback player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? 
Sticking with Walker on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They lost four there, and it's third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's third and nine. From the gun, here's Smith. And it'll find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no run play, won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? They, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot. And they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? It'll be a gain of five, and it's second down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Smith. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Michael On fourth Dixon down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Ray Ray McLeod deep here for the Niners. Taking it about the 16. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. That'd be ideal. Well, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice game for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Up the gut, McCaffrey. Oh, able to avoid him. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. 62 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating him up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a bat's having a great game, You've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, not get loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the 41, here's second and three. A handoff, McCaffrey running right. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. We've caught a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot doing. No, he, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. 
So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. And this will be out of bounds at the one here, the 12-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Here's Smith now on second down. This ball tipped and it's gonna be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Throwing now is Geno. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the ten, back at the nine. That is Nick Bosa from out on the edge who worked his way in for the sack. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield and coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. So possession goes over here on the punt, and they will take over first and ten. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. This is second and eight. Back to throw, Purdy. Throws the out loud and completes it to Samuel. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick that first down, and you try to start them out when you do that. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Charles, he doesn't seem to be particularly in tune with his receivers, just two for seven throwing the football, but he did seem really locked in before the game. Yeah, and that has to do with receivers sometimes. Sometimes the defenders knock them off their routes, and you're usually pretty precise. One, two, three, cut, balls out of his hands to the receiver. In this case, might be off by a half step either way. They've got to find a way to get back in sync. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. We often give credit to the O-line there, two tight end formation, those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, and that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. Back to Walker on first down. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. Ten more there and another first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Walker now on first and ten. 
And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Fred Warner, the all-pro linebacker there on the stop. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Geno out of throw. And lock it with a grab over the middle. And a six-yard game gets him right around the 43. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. They'll try for the first with Walker. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Give him six yards and they do convert on third. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. On first down, Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 35, here's the second and eight. Play action. It's Smith. It's caught, lock it. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Now to the ground, here's Walker. Oh, it shifts past him. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After run, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Walker with another carry. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. They'll get that complete to Parkinson. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And this will wind up being a third and three. It's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive. And now they face a third and three here. Running right, here's Walker. And he will score. Ken Walker, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Seahawks are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. And they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacking in the line of scrimmage partners. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roll, and he found it. Myers connects on the PAT, and we are tied at seven. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was Ken Walker finishing things off with the touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And the 49ers getting set to trot out there. 
And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Here's Purdy. And Samuel caught left side. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Brings up second and three at the 32-yard line. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he is gonna lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef, they wanna run the football. But that means they probably wanna run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. The throwing here, Purdy. And that's incomplete. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up the running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start. And ends up falling incomplete. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. This is third down and 12. Purdy looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Back to the ground attack here, it's McCaffrey. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They out leveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield and held them to no gain. Second and 10. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. They'll get this to Jennings over the middle. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 37. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Purdy off the play fake. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Purdy. He'll take a shot for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Well, the incompletion, but now we also have an injured player. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. 
that's so frustrating for an offense, especially on the road. You put together a great drive, but in the end, you come away with nothing. And it kind of silenced the crowd a little, too. But few things wake them up quite like a missed field goal. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense. The Omens effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball because there's a rhythm that gets established. Right? They're running it well, and the, and the back's getting the ball, and he's in sync and reading blocks, and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't met an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to pay dirt. Now Gino on first down. Smith and Jigba with the grab. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners 33. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. They'll try and run. It's Dallas. And they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. So they'll pass on what would have been a 49-yard field goal attempt. And they're going for it on fourth down. They'll run for it. It's Walker, and he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. The Seahawks go for it but can't convert, and the 49ers are going to get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that, a full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense. And they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Now a second and ten. Now a give right side McCaffrey. Able to slither by. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 90 yards now for McCaffrey. It's a first down. Now that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle. Forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that. I don't feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. Pressure comes, he's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Flying in to pick up that sack, Jordan Brooks. The pressure that time right up the middle, and he was able to wiggle in there pretty easily and get the sack. Yeah, sometimes you end up getting caught in a little bit of a breakdown about who to block up front, and that creates the gap there, and he took full advantage, got to the quarterback, and finished off the sack. A tough spot here, third and 15. Purdy now to throw. And he is caught. And that will wind up moving the 
the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 29-yard line. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. Help me out, partner. Did they use up all their juice on second down when they got the sack? Because on third down, zero pressure. All the time in the world, and he picks up the first down with that throw. Purdy's throw taken in by Samuel. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five at the 24-yard line. From the 24 now, here's second and five. Now Purdy. Completes it to Jennings. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 15 yards there for number 15. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. Trying to get out wide, but he's going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play, how about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. This offense so far on third down, they've had good success, five for eight to this point. They're looking at a third and goal here. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And he's going to go down, sacked back at the 13-yard line. Jared Reed muscles his way in for the sack. This has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Look at it, moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. And his kick here is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Kenneth Walker headed back out there. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat, make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Throwing now is Gino. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. That was a nicely run slam route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now Smith. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. 
He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch signal for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 22. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. The tackle made by Boye Mafe. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stopped that play, Maybe use that speed against him in the future. Second down and right back to McCaffrey. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there was a lane that could really break off a huge game. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Third and five. Back to throw, Purdy. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he's gonna have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. On first down, Purdy. This will be caught at Samuel. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. That's caught out right by Jennings. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two on the Seahawks 33 yard line. Two yards to go, second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he's going to have the first down as they move into field goal range here at the 25-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the offense as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. to throw it on first down. And his throw is incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throws the L out and completes it to Samuel. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Here's second and 10. Throwing here, Purdy. 
That's Samuel caught left side. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Purdy from the gun on third down. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They stopped the double coverage on it. Made it very tough for him to get the ball. And it's a fake. He's going to throw it. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. 19 seconds showing to play in the half as they come up here first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you two in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports halftime report. We saw the former All-Pro Christian McCaffrey up to his old tricks in that first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Tight football game thus far. 10-7 the score as we resume action on EA Sports. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Here comes the Seahawks' offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. You know, I think the defense is saying back to that. Why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, put some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some rest, we'll play even better for you. And, oh, by the way, pay off a few of those drives with some points, too. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Straight ahead running, here's Dallas. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. From the gun, it's Walker. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. 99 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. And Smith's throw into the hands of Fan. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. 
So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. On second down, it's Walker. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. When you try to create space for your running back, the first thought is how physical is the offensive line. Sometimes it's just positioning. On that play, it didn't matter about positioning or being physical. The defensive front, they outleveraged them and won the battle. From the gun on third down, Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 26. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. A quick throw out to Lockett. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 22 yard line. Now Gino. He finds Smith and Jigba. They just keep marching right along. First down, a pickup of eight there. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. Ball on the eight. It's second and four. Geno now to throw. Out right to Smith and Jigba. Call it a gain of a yard, and now we've got a third and three. A gain of a yard brings up third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Smith on third down. That is caught, and the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing, and that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three, just get the ball right to the receiver. Is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Kenneth Walker, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on an opening drive of the second half. Well, hard to argue with that being their best drive of the game so far as they use the running game to get them into the end zone. Couldn't agree more, partner, prior to that drive. They sputtered a little bit, but it looks like they found the formula. I'd expect them to go back to that more and more as this game develops. to boot it away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. 
And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Play action. Now Purdy. And he knocks the ball away. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there's going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce them, might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, most of them blocking for a while in this game. They don't get one mulling it up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. that? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield of man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. Here's McLeod on the return. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Another run with McCaffrey on second down. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big run there, 29 yards and a first. Sometimes those lines that are drawn on a grease board or in a playbook, they come to life out on the field, don't they? And we just saw down that outside handoff to the right. That right tackle, he gets excited for that call, doesn't he? He does, because he just wants to dominate his guy and say, listen, I was the point of attack. I took care of business. That's why you're able to get downfield and add all those yards to your total. Yeah, really nice gain there. Now on first down, it's Purdy. He'll get this to Jennings over the middle. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on him. Really well done. Now Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. 
And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. But he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. And defensive back Jamal Adams hit on the stop. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Now he's got it. And he's brought down. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Purdy will set up to throw it here. That'll be caught by Ayu. Touchdown, 49ers. Brandon Ayuk there to make the grab. And the 49ers have retaken a third quarter lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Moody good with the extra point. And it's now 17-14. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with a touchdown reception. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the gun, Walker with it to about the 40-yard line. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Ball on the 40 now. Here's a second and eight. Play action. It's Smith. A quick throw there is incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Smith. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. 
Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. Brock Purdy and the 49ers out for their next possession. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. So from the 22, here's second and two. Purdy now to throw. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Now throwing on third down there, but he can't all connect. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. Here comes the 49ers punter now. As he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And it'll be Seahawks football first and 10. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. You're exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. From the 46, here's second down and five. Throwing now is Geno. And complete to Smith and Jigba. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. From the 33, here's second and a yard. Straight ahead, Walker. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one if people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith and Walker with it over the middle. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that will bring up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Smith. It 
that's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. To throw is Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert with a gain of four. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. Walker now on first and ten. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now it's Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now it's third and three. Here's Smith. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. So on now comes the kicker. It's Jason Myers from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Myers' kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk in the 20. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And boy, now you see him, now you don't. Excellent move, nice run, winds up getting about six. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. They stay on the ground, McCaffrey again. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 18 yards, first down, Niners. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch victory. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Hitting Samuel on the slant. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. On second down, McCaffrey. Yeah, good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. That good for 19 at a first down. He continues to be dominant running the football. I mean, keep feeding him, right? Yeah, you should because what he's put up already is really like a two-game total. Give him a lot of credit, but give the rest of the offense credit as well. The big guys up front, 
and the receivers on the perimeter. Everyone's getting involved blocking people downfield. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Up the gut, McCaffrey. A beautiful fake. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He'll get 17 on that one, and the Niners have a first down. This has been a good drive so far. It's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Now this time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. That's into the hands of Dwelly. Only able to gain a couple there, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Ball at the nine on second and eight. Here's Samuel. And this carry brought to an end at the eight. Good stick skills, just not much room there to operate. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. That's complete right around the eight. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And that's going to bring up the fourth down. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. And his kick is indeed good. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. Well, now how about this return? Now that should give him a spark. He's across the 40 to the 43. And the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. Now Smith. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Gino. That is incomplete. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Now here's Michael Dixon as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today.
Fair catch called for right around the 11 yard line. It'll be a 39 yard punt, no return. And the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. Debo Samuel trotting out with his offense to start this next drive. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen the guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. From the 32-yard line now, here's a second down and nine. McCaffrey running up the middle. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Early down steps will put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Purdy with it on third and long. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 41-yard line. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Purdy now to throw off the play action. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it's second down. Here's Purdy. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. An eight-yard pickup. First down, San Francisco. Back to throw, Purdy. That's caught by Werner, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, doing a little toe tap, 
to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the point down. And his kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So that gets him a little bit of breathing room, but not much. And you have to think back to the field goal that he missed earlier. This would be a two-score game right now if he had converted then. And if you and I are thinking about it, you know he is as well, because in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I hope I get one more shot in an important spot. He just made that one. He wants one more later to truly make up for the earlier miss. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Geno now to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. He'll look to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Throwing is Smith. He'll fire one downfield for Fan. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. That was for the lead right there. They know they're in a position where fortune favors the brave. So they took their shot, but couldn't connect. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. McLeod to return it. It's a 45-yard punt and eight on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open but you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage, how would you say, it, consistently, right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock, and this is second and less than a yard. Now a give, right side, McCaffrey. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now Samuel. And now right out of the two-minute break, 
We'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. So they come up on second down and they can get another run like we just saw would likely put an end to this thing. A handoff left, McCaffrey. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. This now a third and four. They'll run again. And he will have a Niners first down. And that ought to be the one that seals the victory. Take a knee. McCaffrey on the counter. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. It's a gain of 14 there, and that should be enough to get him home free. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other, and they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. 